Welcome back to the Mental Dietitian Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Lynch Potter. And today's episode is kind of a little bit of a journal entry, a little bit of some things I've been working on lately, and just some realizations that I've been talking about lately. Recently on a podcast where I was a guest, which will come out soon, I was on the Risen Fallen podcast with my buddy Mark. Had a great time. That was yesterday. We had some ma- we had amazing conversation, like amazing, amazing conversation. I really enjoyed being a guest on somebody else's show. It was really nice. If any of you have any friends with a podcast and they want a guest on the show, reach out to me, connect us. I'd love to help another grassroots podcast have as many guests as they possibly can. And it's a great way to share my message with the world too. So this episode is titled... I don't know what it's going to be called yet, but basically the concept is that the windshield is bigger than the rear view mirror for a reason. Something that I've spent, and I basically, I feel like my entire message kind of around this, which is deal with your feelings, sit with your feelings, all of that. And I've talked about it for years now. And for the, basically for the past two and a half, three years is I have gone through a journey of looking at myself, looking at why why I had all this anxiety, why I had all this fear, why I had all this not enoughness. And the past, honestly, two, three months, I've been shown that it's time to look forward. It's time to create a vision for the future rather than focusing on the trauma, focusing on all this stuff, because you can start perpetuating things you don't want by thinking about them all the time. Your subconscious doesn't know what is real and what is not real. So when we focus on something all the time, your subconscious starts showing you that those things in your life, even though it might not be what you want. The human brain is attracted to what is familiar. All right. But what if what is familiar for you is suffering, sadness, complaining, negativity, uh, all the reasons why you're not enough. And If that's all you're focusing on all the time, and it's all you're thinking about, especially if you're thinking about your trauma, especially if you're thinking about all the things that have happened to you, all the bad things, and you're trying to work through all of that, I believe it is where I, I'm not going to say I went wrong, but for the last three years, I forgot to look forward at the same time. I basically was looking in the rear view mirror. I stopped dreaming. I stopped creating big goals. I stopped thinking about the future, except for making a certain dollar figure per month because I work in commission sales or the next trip that Lexi and I would go, would go on. That's basically for the past three years, that was the extent of how big I would think with my dreams. So obviously I didn't go anywhere. I kind of am in the same place I was three years ago, financially, not a, basically financially, only financially, not mentally, not emotionally, not relationally, just financially. Let's just talk about it that way. So what I've realized is, don't get me wrong, but before I finish this thought, I had an amazing past three years. I went on an amazing holiday to Italy. I've driven really nice cars. I drove, I drove an Audi for a bit there. It was too expensive. So I traded it in for a Tesla. That's a nice car. I would like something a little bit different. The more matches who I want to be, which is like an off-road vehicle, something I can drive off-road up into the bush, camp in the middle of the mountains, go fishing, do things that the the little boy version of me absolutely loved that I stopped doing. Just exploring nature. That shit makes me happy. That's what I want to do. But I stopped dreaming. And the reason I stopped dreaming is because I was so focusing on the next psychedelic retreat I was going. I was so focused on my healing, healing my traumas, healing my nervous system that I started to see that that was the answers for everything. When I would hear about somebody who had physical pain, I'm like, oh, it's probably their trauma, which it might be. It also might not be because we're a human being on planet earth and not everything is black and white. Not everything is so simple. So I've been listening to a lot of Joe Dispenza lately, and a lot of you guys have probably heard of this guy or have dived into his work. I have been listening to his morning and evening meditations for about four or five days now, every night. 
and the change is hard. You can really see that there's, there's a part of you that wants to stay exactly where you are. There's a part of you that doesn't want to change that is, that squirms and feels uncomfortable, especially when you've been telling yourself a story about what you can and can't do. Like even around this podcast, I, there's always a part of me that feels like I'm not, I'm not really all into this. And I, I, I love it. I truly love it. I love sharing my message. I love communicating. I love teaching my thoughts to people. I've got so much good feedback, but I had a governor on me. A governor was that this, I, I didn't, I was like scared of how big and how successful I could be and scared of reaching out to guests and scared of, of, of buying new equipment and even getting a new camera and, and making it look professional and creating a really good content. I was scared of creating. Basically, I was scared of life. So what I did, instead of looking at my future, I was looking at my past, constantly trying to find answers, which would get rid of that fear about going out and creating the life that I really, really want. You can't get over the fear of creating the life you really, really want. That is the, the barrier. That's the price of entry, baby. That's the price of entry. For you to really change your life, what I've learned through Joe Dispenza is that we're attracted to what we're familiar with, even if it's miserable. I had a client that had a somebody she knew that lived in basically a hoarding situation. Somebody she really cared about. And this person was living in a hoarding situation where there was like, just wasn't doing the dishes, was not a, not a good place. Um, basically living in grime and filth. And this person was scared of going outside or to other people's places because she thought that their place would be dirty, even though her place was probably much dirtier. And we talked about this, and I thought it was a beautiful analogy for a lot of people is that where, wherever we are, especially like your room or your, your car is a perfect reflection of your mind or the standards you have for yourself. So this person that she was talking about was scared to go to other places because she was used to what she was familiar with, even though it was grimy and gross and probably making her sick. Just like a lot of us, a lot of us have a certain belief about ourselves or a certain perspective about ourselves. And that perspective might actually be hurting us. It might actually be causing us a lot of suffering, but it's familiar. So we stay where it is familiar. How do we change this? Joe Dispenza talks about creating a vision for the future rather than repeating the memories of the past. Because if you're constantly looking in the rear view mirror, you're actually going to start projecting the past onto the future and basically just live the past in the future. So what I've been doing the last four or five days is following these morning and evening meditations where it talks about you have to create a feeling within you of what you want in the future. He calls it an experiment with destiny. I absolutely love that. You're experimenting with manifestation. You're experimenting with your destiny by having the thought, but also feeling the feeling of what it would be like when that thing happens. I've done it with all kinds of things. I've done it with receiving my purple belt, which is my next Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu belt that I will receive. And what that would feel like, what it would feel like having the blue belt draped over my shoulder as my professor ties the purple one around my waist. And then I saw the brown belt and then I saw the black belt and the feeling that I would feel after giving 15 years, 10 to 15 years of my life, three to five days a week and receiving my Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt and what that would feel like. I felt what it's going to be like when I go home in about 15 to 20 days and see my mom who I haven't seen in four, four and a half years, almost five years now. And seeing my dad and giving them a hug and, and giving my friends Brett and people like Aaron, like, and my sister and other friends and family, I'm going to give them a hug. And I'm just, I'm amazing. Like I'm like sitting with this amazing feeling of what that would feel like. Or another one was imagining Lexi and I dancing together because she's an amazing dancer and, and sitting there 
and visualizing and feeling us maybe doing a choreograph together and her teaching me how to dance or having a certain dollar figure in my bank account and imagining what that would feel like. That might sound like huru hippie bullshit and like, oh, the secret, the manifestation, but there's true science behind it. And when you start understanding the science behind it of however we feel, whatever our feelings are, we are basically addicted to those feelings. We're addicted to those feelings. So because they're familiar. So how do we, how do we actually change? Well, we have a limbic brain, which is our deep emotional brain. And we have our, our prefrontal cortex. We have the thinking brain and we have the feeling brain. Now, a lot of people like to say, this is one of my favorite things that people say, well, I'm a very logical person. And they say it in basically, if they're buying a vehicle from me, for example. No, you're not. You're not a logical person. There's not a single human being on earth that's a logical person. You are a feeling person because your limbic brain will make decisions 80,000, 80,000, 8, 0, 0, 0, 0, 80,000 times faster than your thinking brain. Mark Manson, who wrote the book, Everything is Fucked, and um, what's the other fuck one he wrote? He wrote um, Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. That's that's the books he wrote. I think, I'm sure he's written other books too. In his book, Everything is Fucked, a book about hope, he talks about this, that our car of consciousness is driven by the feeling brain. And our thinking brain is just kind of like a passenger, like a backseat driver. And the reason why a lot of people have a very hard time in their head is because the thinking brain is chirping, going away, talking, and the feeling brain just ends up doing what it wants to do anyway. And then the, the thinking brain will try and shame the feeling brain. And that creates this emotional storm. It can create anxiety, depression, all kinds of stuff, because we're not actually understanding that the feeling brain is always going to be the driver. It's how we are designed. It's why we create art. It's why we, it's why people do the craziest things and build companies and Kobe Bryant goes and plays basketball and he wins a championship and he's in the court the next day at 4 a.m. It's why life is so beautiful because we feel, right? But if we are constantly feeling a certain way based on beliefs about ourselves, then it's very hard to expect change unless we think of a different and feel, think and feel of a different reality, a different personal reality so that the future is different than the past. And I'm a perfect example of it. The last three years, I've been focusing on the past and I feel like I have answers. I know who I am up to this point. I know who I am. And I know all the things that I, all the people that I've let tell me who I am and who I'm not and why I did it because I didn't think I was worthy of certain things, but enough's enough. You can change right now by envisioning a future that you want and feeling the feelings that it would feel like when that future occurs. And then that becomes familiar to your brain. So when you are out in the world, you'll start noticing things, hearing things. You're basically changing the lens in which you look at life through so you're looking at a future abundance focus lens versus a memory of the past focus lens, which is a very strong lens, which if you keep looking through that lens, you'll just keep living the memories of the past rather than a vision of the future. So that's, and that's, he has a bunch of science behind it, Joe Dispenza. I've heard of his stuff before, but I've never really dived into it. A lot of people listening to this will probably be like, Come on, man, like you should dive dove into this ages ago. But I didn't. And I found him recently and I'm really connected with him. And I look forward to sharing more about this. And I've already had in four or five days, I've already had little things where it feels like I'm attracting things into my field of awareness that are for me, that, that would help me get to what I really want. And it's really exciting. And it feels really good. And something else I've noticed, though, is 
the talk, the, the horrible things that I've said to myself is ramped up into overdrive. And I think the reason why that is, and I'm not listening to it, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing for as long as I can. So, sorry, for as long as it takes, for as long as it takes to actually create change in my life, to not repeat the mistakes of the past or the, the memories of the past. It's ramped up into overdrive because part of you doesn't want to change. Part of you doesn't want to leave your emotional home. It doesn't want to. It's It wants to stay because it's familiar. It's why you see people that never leave their deadbeat town or never, never really go out into the world to explore because that is familiar to them. So if you can identify, hey, what are some emotions or what are some feelings or some beliefs I have about myself, which are keeping me stuck, which are not good for me, but they're so familiar and I've repeated them, I've believed them for such a long time. How do I, how do I get out of that? Well, I invite you to start looking at people like Joe Dispenza, even having conversations like this, even listening to things like this, I told you the blueprint based on what he shares about how to actually create change in your life. You need to start thinking and feeling in a different way. And if you start doing that consistently, like a practice every day, even sometimes multiple times a day, because your brain wants to go back to what's familiar. So you need to create a new familiar. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope this one really helped you. And I hope you dive into it's, it's guys, it's time to fucking go. It's time to live a beautiful, wonderful life. You can achieve anything that you put your mind to. And that is a good thing. And also a bad thing. Cause if you're putting your mind to negativity things, and things that are keeping you stuck and saying things like, oh, I don't have any money. I'm broke right now. Or this relationship isn't working. Or my boss doesn't like me. Or my mom hates If you are saying things like that, rather than like, I'm going to have I'm gonna have more money next year than I'm going to have now. And ha but how do I do that? And what do, what, does I ha what do I have to do tomorrow? How do I have to show up tomorrow? And what will that feel like? It's going to be uncomfortable. What, who do I need to become to do that? Who do I need to become to show up in my relationship differently? When do I need to stop talking? When do I need to say things? How do I need to say them? How can I show up differently tomorrow? Because every day is a new day. How can I better that relationship with my mom, my dad, my sister, my coworker? Where do I need to leave? And where do I need to go? Where do I need to expand? And where do I need to contract? And when does that start tomorrow? And what will that feel like? And when I do notice these things, these feelings, these thoughts come into play, I'm going to take ownership of them. They're not going to hijack my day. I'm not going to go unconscious. I'm going to be conscious. And I'm going to start slowly taking over the reins of the ship of my life and steering it where I want to go. Love you guys. I hope this message finds you well. And I'll talk to you next week.